So the next parameter is flow rate. So this is um, going to be the compromise between the speed of analysis and the separation efficiency. So as with uh, reverse phase chromatography, uh, I'm sure you're used to the optimum col column efficiency it does vary with the flow rate. So you see the Van Diemen curves that you can that you can generate. So it is important to consider this. Here we have an example of a low molecular weight polystyrene or a very low like a ligomeric uh, around the 400 Daltons and one up at the 2.9 kilodaltons. And you see the effect in changing the flow rate. So the top ones are at 0 0.2 mil per minute and the bottom ones are at 1 mil per minute. And for those low molecular weight oligomers, you can see by increasing the speed, you're actually increasing the resolution of your experiment, which is perhaps counterintuitive to those that are working with uh, traditional uh, GPC. Whereas with the larger polymer, there's no degradation of that of that um, trace and you're getting things five times faster so you're increasing the speed and for the low ones you're definitely increasing the resolution as well and as you can see with the uh, molecular weight data obtained you're still getting the same transferable data there's no degradation occurring when you're going to the really high molecular weight polymers so here we have um, going all the way up to seven and a half million and it should be noted that we um, specify the APC up to 2 million, so this is really pushing what you would do on an APC. You can see as you increase the flow rate, you start to get uh, a change in, the, in that high molecular weight peak. And what you're actually seeing there is um, slalom chromatography. Um, so that's where you're actually elongating the, the polymer chain out, so you're not getting true size exclusion mechanism of, a, of the uh, coiled polymer. Um, still no degradation in this case with polystyrene, it's quite strong. So the final method development parameter is going to be around the calibration. Um, so which standards do you want to choose? How many standards do you want to ensure you have a robust column calibration? What type of column calibration do you require? And uh, the frequency of the calibration. So with the calibration, your routine calibration is often overlooked or not optimized in traditional GPC. But it's extremely important because any kind of fluctuations that happen can lead to significant results with your GPC data. So we traditionally look for between 9 and 12 uh, point calibration as a minimum across the expected molecular weight range of your intended uh, analyte. How often do you do it? It's always uh, an interesting question to ask our users. It's never as, fr as frequent as maybe they would like uh, due to the time taken to actually calibrate the system. So if you think about traditional GPC runtime, it's between 30 and 60 minutes. And if you have sets of calibrants where you have normally four per vial, so this is the optimal situation, uh, that's still three vials. So you can be looking up for a few hours to perform a calibration. And so people don't tend to run bracketed calibrations. In fact, they don't tend to run that regular calibrations uh, due to the to the time constraints. So going back to the polymer that we brought up earlier, so the, the uh, epoxy polymer, and looking again at the APC column selector tool, it also shows you what calibration kits are suitable. So you have polystyrene, PMMA, so depending on what solvent you choose and depending on what bank of columns you have, it'll suggest both the chemistry and also which type of kit which is optimized for your column bank. So here we have selected a polystyrene calibration, the most common type of standard for THF based polymer chromatography. And we've actually shown side by side performing bracketed calibrations on an APC compared to traditional GPC column set. And you see it's taken us for four samples including replicates uh, with a bracketed calibrations to really push the uh, precision up and also to spot any kind of things that have gone wrong with your system earlier. But that has taken 90 minutes with the APC and this is exactly the same process on traditional GPC has taken, taken a full day. So as you start to scale this, you can see just how much more throughput you can do, but also importantly, how much more confidence you can have in your data 
because of the increased uh, calibration um, that you brought to bear. So I said that we have matched the molecular weight resolution range of the APC column chemistries to kits, pre-made kits that you can buy, which are vials with four standards in each vial, and it come in the set three to give you a 12 point calibration. So the final step is going to be the data processing and the reporting. All this is going to be conducted within software, so within the Empower chromatography data system. So here we see some samples uh, that we discussed in the previous slides. And here we're using the quick start interface of the Empower GPC console as it's the uh, simplest to, to visualize and interact with. When you do your calibration, and predominantly this is this is usually with now standards, although other calibration modes are available. Um, but I'll be talking today about the now standards as being the by far and way the most common. You're going to fit a curve to those calibration points. And it's important to note here the importance of having the calibrants cover your molecular weight range. Because outside of there, the software is going to extrapolate. And this can lead to precision errors if your polymer sits outside of the, of the calibration range. So this will lead to having your set points for your maximum and your minimum retention times and therefore molecular weights. You can do various data processing. There's an awful lot of data processing capabilities within Empower. This particular case is just showing how you can drop a perpendicular across your distribution if you want to maybe separate out the additives from the polymer or maybe the ligamers from your polymer, you can readily do that within Empower to make sure that you're getting the, um, the distribution of your analytes of interest. And you can even set up both so that you can do these simultaneously. And you have both reported data in one run from your polymer and your additives, for example, or your oligomers, maybe if you're doing something like REACH. So when you look at the overlays of the data, and this is something which the APC excels at, is the reproducibility of the data. You can see we've highlighted a lot of replicates here, and you can run a report which will run all the statistics over the reproducibility, again, to give you confidence that your, that your method is correct, that you aren't seeing some deviations either due to some kind of unexpected system fault or more likely a non-optimal method. So now we've completed our look at the method development approach uh, to the Acuity APC, the system, columns and standards. So to summarize the, the workflow of approaching method development with the APC, it's the same as GPC. You have to consider a number of factors to ensure you have a very robust an appropriate test. So first and foremost, the goal of the analysis. Then what are the properties of your polymer, the chemistry, the molecular weight, correcting the most suitable solvent, the most mo uh, mobile phase. Which detectors do you need to ensure that you're getting the information that you require out of your experiment? Where the APC takes it to the, to the next level is the ability to screen uh, multiple solvents uh, to ensure that you have the, the best separation, best mobile phase to do that separation. And then within that solvent itself, how to optimize that mobile phase through the use of additives or modifiers. You can both screen and optimize on the APC very easily, which is something that's very difficult to do on traditional GPC, both due to the time constraints, but mainly due to the polymeric columns themselves. You need to ensure that you select the correct calibration standards to the column bank um, pore size, which again is facilitated both in terms of the APC column selector, but also the um, calibration kits that we have available. And then you can choose and optimize your processing for your analysis to your, uh, to your particular requirements and ensure that you are uh, getting the data consistency and um, reporting that, that you need. So thank you for your attention. If you have any further questions on method development for SEC or for the QTAPC, uh, please contact us here at Waters.